Hey guys, things change fast when you're out hiking. You gotta be prepared. Hey guys, Chris here. Today we're gonna take a look at the outdoor hiking clothes you need to be wearing to make sure that you're warm, dry, cool, and comfortable. That's next. here okay so when I'm out hiking and I see people wearing like cotton t-shirts and hoodies and jeans and tennis shoes and ball, ball caps you know there's nothing wrong with these things but if the weather changes if you get too hot if you get too cold these things will fail you and so it's important that you wear clothing that is essentially called performance wear and that includes things like polar fleece, uh, smart wool, microfibers, and uh, uh, clothes with UV protection. These are the kind of things that can keep you warm, dry, cool, comfortable, and keep you going. And uh, it's just really important that you, uh, um, you know, consider everything that you're wearing, especially when you're out in the backcountry uh, for any extended length of time. The weather and things change, and it's just really worth it to... Uh, buy things that are going to work for you and not against you. So with that, we're going to dig in, take a look. We're going to start uh, with the socks, the new going boots, pants, shirts, button-up shirts, jackets, and then shells and hats and glasses. So those are like 10 things I'm going to go over. And I'm going to do it really fast and see it, see if I can get it done. I don't know if I can get it done or not, but we're going to give it a shot. So, Okay, we're going to start from the ground up with socks. Uh, socks, per performance socks come in different forms, but they're usually something like omni wool, merino wool, smart wool. These kind of socks, they all have wool with uh, nylon and a little bit of lycra, and they all have moisture wicking properties, odor reducing, they're warm when it's damp, they're cool when it's hot, they're itch free, shrink resistant, they even have micro bile fighting properties in them which is essentially uh, it is an agent that kills microorganisms that can grow in your feet when you're when it's sweaty, wet, damp, dark and all like that. So there's an agent inside the socks fighting for you. That is like science fiction or something. But anyways, really good socks. They work great and uh, they'll keep you nice and warm, comfortable uh, when you're hiking. Socks. Shoes are next. All right, next up is hiking, hiking shoes, hiking boots. Uh, traditionally, people have been wearing heavy uh, leather hiking boots with ankle support and good traction. There's good reasons to wear them. Um, it's just it just feels good going through heavy brush and down the trail we're having something uh, on your feet that's really sturdy and particularly with the grips and everything but more people are switching over to like trail runners and even running shoes because of their lightweight and they actually dry pretty fast and they're very comfortable I prefer something a little bit in, in between it's more of a synthetic uh, lighter weight hiking boot. I still like the uh, the uh, the ankle support and just because of the brush. I get in the brush and stuff when I'm fishing, and it's just I, I appreciate that protection on my legs or my my ankles. Uh, good grip, but you need good grip. Waterproof. It's a term that's kind of thrown around. It's more like water resistant, uh, but it, it is helpful when it's raining or something like that. If you're you know you know just in a little bit of water. But uh, I traditionally like these kinds of boots. Uh, then they have the more lighter weight hiking shoes. Uh, again, it's kind of your preference, but you definitely want something with traction on it uh, that's lightweight and comfortable, durable, and kind of made for the outdoors because it's take a little bit of a beating. So, shoes. Okay, next we got pants. 
outdoor hiking pants, breathable, quick dry, zip off legs. Look at this, this is great, isn't this great? So you wanna go swimming, you find the zipper, zip, you can take that thing right off. Look at that, just took the leg off like that. Now I got a pair of shorts. These things, I, use, I usually wear these when I'm fishing because they will dry like within a matter of about five minutes in the direct sunlight, isn't that awesome? And they're, they're a little bit loose fitting, but they look good on you. They're not tight, you, but they're not baggy either. Um, zippers all over, uh, zippered pe uh, back pockets, uh, pockets all over, flexible on the waist, belt loops, uh, great colors for the outdoors. Uh, these are great pants. I got another pair. These are called Sierra uh, Experience. Um, these are, uh, a lot of times they come with a belt already built into it, flaps on the pockets. Uh, they dry super fast. Again, I'll wash them and I'll dry them for maybe just a couple, three minutes just to kind of get the per percentage of moisture off them. And then I'll just hang dry them. Uh, and like, unlike cotton jeans, they'll, they'll get wet. They will stay wet until they're completely dry again. And then they, they tend to cling tight to your skin. So when they're wet, your legs are gonna get cold. You're gonna get cold. And, uh, even when it's really freezing out, you can wear these and then wear some polar fleece long underwear underneath them. And these are great for winter. So anyways, outdoor hiking pants. Okay, next up was shirts. These are awesome. These are the microfiber, a lightweight, moisture wicking, quick dry, uh, sports shirts, performance shirts. These were great. I actually got this at Sierra Trading Post. It was on the sale rack. Look at this price, check this out. Four bucks. That is awesome. It's a LA gear. It's made for working out, but it works great for hiking as well, just for your, as your undershirt. Very flexible in the armpits and the areas where you need it. Again, when it's wet, you can quick dry it. If you got a t-shirt that's cotton and you get wet, it's, it's wet until you put that thing around the campfire and it's 100% dry again next to the campfire. This stuff can dry in the sun in just a matter of minutes. Here's a long sleeve microfiber. Uh, very comfortable. I really like this. I wear this skiing. I wear this uh, in the backcountry at night. And uh, when it's cold, different colors, different, uh, different kind of shapes and stuff. But yeah, microfiber, quick dry t-shirts. These things work awesome. You got to have them. Dump the cotton. Cotton is rotten. <laughs> All right, that's t-shirts. Now we got button-up shirts. Okay, I like the, the men's outdoor shirts. They're... Uh, they're awesome. We got things like Wrangler, Carhartt, Swiss Tech, REI has shirts. Uh, most of the outdoor companies have their version of these shirts. They got pockets everywhere. They Look at this. They got zippers to put things, you know, ID and money and things like that. Uh, they're flexible material. So you got a little bit of a, you know, when you're moving, it's not restricting. Look at this. this we have, this is the Wrangler Outdoor Series. We have UPF Protection 30, that's ultraviolet protection factor. That's different than SPF, which is for sunscreen, which is a solar protection, no, sun protection factor. And this is a UPF 30, uh, so it protects you from the sun's harmful rays. So that's awesome. Uh, we also have the breathable fabric. It allows moisture to escape from your body is what it says. Uh, very, very helpful. Uh, buttons all over to roll the sleeves up and just heavy duty, heavy duty shirts made for the outdoors. Look at this one. We got stretch fabric. It's really, it looks like just heavy duty, almost like canvas. And then you pull on it and there's this like flex to it. It feels kind of weird almost because it's flexible. Look at that. Again, the same kind of thing. It's uh it's, what does it say here? It says peak stretch, security pocket, UPF 30. There you go again, we got UPF 30. Uh, P 
peak dry, wicks away moisture from the skin. There's all kinds of great things just in this shirt like this. In the old days, you just have wool. A wool shirt with some pockets on it, that was what you had. So nowadays you get to get more uh, performance, performance uh, shirts. So got to wear one of these as well if you, if you like that kind of shirt. I love these kind of shirts. So I wear these uh, when, when I can, when I'm out hiking and stuff. So, All right, next is jackets, polar fleece. All right, polar fleece is a must have for outdoor hiking, outdoor travel, backpacking. It's lightweight. It keeps you warm and insulated even if it's moist or damp. It is not windproof at all. It's, it, the wind will go right through it, but it makes great insulation. So what you wanna do is, is wear it when it's not windy or wear it with a shell on it that will provide uh, some wind resistance and then it acts like total insulation, which is wonderful. So I got a couple here uh, These are just half zip to the neck Super comfortable uh, little pocket on it. I always like the little pocket put my uh, Put my money in there credit card or whatever um, matches <laughs> but uh, Polar fleece is just excellent insulation Makes a great pillow if you need this, you know, if you if it's an afternoon, you want to make a pillow out of it. But polar fleece is great. But you just have to have some polar fleece. Uh, they got full zip up. They got a, a vest polar fleece. Um, but it's a great material that was meant to mimic wool and the qualities of wool. But it actually they found out it does more things. Um, like I said, it, it dries really fast as well. So polar fleece. Okay, next up we have the, the outer shell, and this is gonna give you your wind protection and your, your rain protection. And that is so critical because then it allows the, uh, the insulation properties of the polar fleece to do its job, to, which is closer to your, your body, to keep you warm. And so it's really important to have a good shell. These are really lightweight. They got hoods on them uh, and you know flexible arms on them. Velcro pockets and uh, actually just really important to have a, a shell to go with it. And this thing can fold down pretty quickly and easily. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, look at that. There you go. Now you got your windproof, rainproof. And this actually dries really fast too um, when it gets uh, wet on the outer part of it. So. So that's that. We got the hats are next. You know, the, the ball cap works, I guess, but the problem with, here's the problem with the ball cap, is that it protects only about half of your face, if, if even that, it's more like a third of your face, depending on where the sun's at, obviously. Your ears are totally exposed, your neck is totally exposed, and then you're back to having the problems with the, having to reapply sunscreen every couple hours. I prefer, I, like, I mean, I'll put the sunscreen on whenever I can, but I prefer to have a wide brim hat. It's gonna give me protection on my ears, protection on my neck. I get more coverage around my face and I just got more options with it. Plus it looks cooler. <laughs> I like the, uh, the strap here. Uh, when the wind comes up, it's amazing. If you're up on a mountain or something, that wind will just take that hat and throw it off the cliff. <laughs> I prefer having a, uh, a strap on it like that so but you gotta have a good hat I would recommend the wide brim I got I think you can get hats like this even at Walmart and stuff uh, little adjustments on it breathable it probably you know some more of that microfiber kind of material that will quick dry on you uh, there's all kinds of hats you can get but get the wide brim I think you'll you won't regret it and then you won't have to worry about the, the skin getting burned and the skin cancer and stuff like that don't don't do it man don't wear the ball cap. Wait, what, what do you think? You like the ball cap? <laughs> or the hat? <laughs> okay, glasses. Next. Okay, when I'm hiking, I like to have 100% UV protection, more of the Polaroid, little protection on the side here from uh, glare, like if you're in snow or ice even. Uh, 
These are my prescription glasses. They also have the Kuroki on the back. And these keep me from losing these things because I'll set them down somewhere if I don't have the strap and I will forget them, I swear I will. And so I, I always can, I can drop them like that and I don't have to worry about them. I need things attached to me, just like my trekking poles and my, my, the holders in my backpack. But these work great. You need some really good glasses and you don't want to lose them. 100% UV protection. Definitely got to recommend it. Also with the Polaroids, if you're on a stream, you can see better underwater and you can see fish uh, and other things under the water. But I like them for fishing as well. So UV protection glasses, definitely. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Keep hiking.